achieve that objective. And uh, given that, given your implementation of those practices, how do you think you're doing on your overall achievement of objective one? And so then they will give themselves a score of uh, whatever it might be for that given objective. They can also add some additional comments. So, uh, you know, I need um, template letters. This is something I can type to myself uh, just to give myself a note based on the practices that I read there. If I want to uh, make a note to myself and add that in there. And then we go into objective two and that's it. That's basically it. You just roll through the entire thing that way. Uh, like I said, the whole idea is to have a nice flow and get it, uh, get it moving nicely. And so then what happens once they finish their first section, um, they will be brought to their dashboard. And the dashboard is really a, a view of the sections that are in the assessment. And so this one here has six sections, communication office systems, uh, wellness, access to justice. You can see the status of each section. So I have completed three of these sections now. Um, uh, it gives me a completion time, how long it took me to get through those and the ones that I have left to do. And then, you know, the actions at this point are really either view the results of that a given section that I did um, or begin a new section. And when it comes to uh, what you get to on uh, viewing the section, I'll just click on that one there so you guys can see this. So this now shows you uh, a report of that section that I just completed with each objective stated, the best practices underneath it, and my scores of each, uh, of, each of the best practices. This document, this is an online version of it, but this document here, uh, we got a lot of great feedback from Colorado lawyers about how they just like this as a reference, uh, as a reference document. So what we did was we took the online version of it and we created uh, a nicely formatted PDF that gets generated uh, from that, um, that response. Uh, and so the PDF can fill several needs. You could print this thing out and have it as a, a paper uh, document. Um, we also designed it to be able to try and um, hit some of the CLE requirements uh, that many regulators have out there. So they want to know things like what's the program name, the date, uh, how many hours were attended uh, overall, who was the program provider. Um, this was, I, we did this in hopes that we could get CLE accreditation for this, which we do have in Colorado, but we haven't, uh, we haven't tried to get elsewhere yet. And then it will give you a breakdown of your activity record and the completion codes on the, so on the sections that you've gone through. And then it's the same information, um, section three, financial management, your objective and your best practices. And so this can be yeah, printed off and scribbled on, it can be a reference thing and it gives you your scores. It's a, it's a, nice, uh, it's a nice document to be able to uh, reference back to. Okay, and feel free if there's, questions that pop up that you want to you know jump in i can uh, i can answer some of those on the way um so then we go back to our dashboard um and i will now look at uh the priorities so underneath the dashboard is the priority section and this is really saying okay you've answered a whole lack of questions for us now uh, on best practices and objectives how do you begin to sort through what's important, what, uh, what areas you should be working on. And so this section covers that. And so it gives you a snapshot of your sections that you've completed, um, your average score uh, throughout those uh, individual sections and an overall index, which is saying, yeah, at this point I'm scoring 78%. Um, this would now be a number that I could work towards, you know, trying to improve next year uh, through education and, uh, and other interventions that might uh, improve that. And then at any point, if I, let's say, took a course on communication and I wanted to go back to my um, back to my dashboard and retake that communication section, I can do that. Uh, and then that will update my score um, in my priorities. And so the priorities are split into two general buckets. We've got the objectives. Um, and so these are the nine objectives that the system has uh, surfaced for me that I should be working on. And so my number one priority is objective number one. Uh, looks like I scored myself a two on that. So quite low. Um, that would be my number one uh, priority at the moment as a, as a practitioner to start looking at. And then on down the list. Um, and then you can see the scores that are assigned to those as you go through. So now I've got some objectives to think about. 
I like to think of objectives as more strategic. They're a little bit higher up on that information stack. And so they're not necessarily an action that I need to take. They're more of a, a strategic initiative that I might need to consider as to how do I avoid unsafe uh, computer practices in general? What are some of the things I can do? The best practices we have in the system, we think are quite good, but there's plenty of lawyers out there, innovative practitioners who have done some interesting things to achieve these same results, these same objectives uh, using different best practices. And so um, we don't like to tell people they have to do it our way. If they've got a way of achieving this that is uh, ethical and safe uh, for their clients, then why not? And then underneath the priority objectives, we have the priority practices. And so this would now help me to organize, okay, what are the things I'm not doing well enough that I should be doing better every day? And so here's my list of practices that I should be working on um, Matt, listed out. Yes. Matt, it looks like we yep. have a question. Okay. Um, oh, yes, there we go. Judge Harrison Dorothy. Hand yet raised. Hi, thank you um, for this presentation. My question is, I know you spoke earlier about that folks can put input this information and remain anonymous throughout the process. But how, yes. and I know you also said that you were gonna to touch on this more later. So forgive me if you will get to this or if you said it and I missed it. But it looks like as you're going through, you're saying we could go back and we could look at the priorities and the dashboard and how is it that the person is able to go back to their quote unquote account if they are inputting information anonymously. Can you explain that connection? Yes, I sure can. That's a great question. Um, so we have different layers to the uh, anonymity that we're providing. And so the first layer is, I want to go through this whole assessment top to bottom. I want to print a PDF off or a hard copy of this thing as my record of it. Um, and then I want to be done. I want to walk away from the platform and never see it again. Um, and you can do that. Uh, the other thing is you just can't come back to it again. You can't come back and redo your section. So it doesn't facilitate the continuous professional development that we are trying to achieve. But um, in the case of somebody who just that's the way they want to do it, uh, we can we can do that. Um, the way that you would come back to it is you'd have to register on the platform and uh, you will see here on the dashboard, we have an alert that says, um, if you want to save your work and maintain access to your personal uh, resource list, you just need to register it with an email address. Now, that doesn't mean that we're sharing this information with anybody. The individual answers of the, of the lawyer still are uh, only accessible by them. So we use uh, login links. We don't actually even use um, uh, usernames and passwords on this platform. We only use login links. And so you come to our website, give us your email address. If you're a registered user, we will send you a secure uh, time limited link to your inbox. You use that link to access your dashboard, see your questions and redo a section. Um, and, and that's it. And that's the only way your questions will be viewable by somebody uh, uh, other than yourself. And so the regulator never gets to see that. Does that, uh, does that cover that fairly well? So Matt, if you choose to uh, uh, log out and print it off, can you come back later and register again at a different time to retake the assessment? You could, yeah, you could. Okay. You just come in anonymously each time uh, as yep. you do it. Okay. All right. Um, but we think if the only reason they're doing that is because they're uncertain about their privacy, then we'd rather, uh, do a good job of explaining to them how their privacy and their information is being protected um, so that they can take full advantage of the platform and the, uh, and the capabilities that it has, because some of these assessments are big and uh, they're not something that you're going to knock off in 10 minutes. And so um, being able to come back uh, is critical and same with the, with the learning resources. And I'll show you that in just a second, why having access to that on a regular basis is a nice thing. So we left off on the priority practices. Um, and again, works the same as the objectives. The nice thing with this is you can now sort your priority practices according to objectives. In other words, you've got a few priority objectives that you have. There's my unsafe computer and online practices. What are the what are the practices underneath that that I scored the lowest? Now I'm getting down to how do I actually fix this problem? 
you know, um, which is, okay, I, I scored myself low on unsafe computer practices. And the practice within that objective that I scored the lowest on, a one, was uh, being aware of international border controls uh, to protect information on devices. So now I've, I've got an action item here almost that I could say, okay, I got to get into this and figure out what this means um, because I gave myself a one on it. And then uh, again, the scoring down from there. The next thing I'm going to show you is the resource library. And the way that works is it's driven off of uh, what we call priority tags. And so all of these questions um, and best practices and objectives, uh, we have tagged with a, a simple tag such as billing process or um, avoiding fraud, communicating effectively, digital security. There's a slew of tags on the platform and every single practice and every single resource have been tagged with one of these tags. And what that enables us to do is to start mapping things together. Now we can map a given practice, such as international border controls, to protect devices. We can now map that to a resource that you might have on hand in your library of, uh, of resources that you'd like to provide. Um, and that gets gives our technology the ability to start slicing and dicing this thing and making it um, responsive to the needs of the individual lawyer. And so I'll show you that. So if we go into our resources, this is my reading list of things that I need to be looking at. Uh, again, I can look at it based on the sections of the, of the assessment that I'm going through. So right now I'm looking specifically at financial management resources. And these have all been hand curated just for me based on the scores that I gave the platform. Um, and so cybercrime, uh, general liability, you can click on any resource um, and open it up to have a look at the uh, information within it. So you can see the tag that gets it there, financial management, brief description, and then I can click on the link itself and it will take me out uh, and open up that, that external resource. Resources are anything with a, uh, a URL assigned to it. So it could be a podcast, it could be a PDF on your website, it could be a blog post by a, um, a person in the profession. Um, as long as it's got a URL, uh, we can get it into your resource library or you can get it into your resource library and have it available to your, uh, to your lawyers. You can also start to sort some of these things as well, which is nice. So I can sort by resource title. I could sort by publisher as well, which is kind of nice. So if I want to have a little look at, uh, you know, everything that the American Bar Association uh, offers up, then I can see all of that stuff in one uh, in one place if that's uh, what I want to see. And then I can also organize these resources by tag. And so if I want to sort of get into a focus um, and look at business insurance for the afternoon, here's my two resources that are going to help me understand that and what I need to do. And that is, in essence, how the platform works. Um, again, it's not, it's not super fancy, but what it does is a, a very, very valuable um, function to a busy lawyer who knows they've got priorities somewhere in their practice. They, they know they need to be working on things. Everybody does. Um, nobody's perfect. But understanding what those needs are can be challenging. So now we've solved that. Now they need resources to get access to. We have pulled those two things together. We've created that bridge that I showed you earlier between the needs and the resource library uh, and given it to them in a, uh, a nice comprehensive package. The beauty of this is that as new resources get added to the library in the back end, this is all dynamic. So if you guys publish a great document on, uh, you know, uh, cross border, uh, crossing borders with devices, and you publish it today, and a lawyer comes in this afternoon and does the assessment, that, that resource will be available to them uh, in their list right away. If I come back as a lawyer uh, to my list next week, and there's been three new resources added to the library, um, my library will be, my, my reading list is going to be refreshed with those new resources if they line up with my priorities. So uh, lawyers won't see the stuff that doesn't apply to them which is also nice because that's the other thing is that we load these lawyers with emails. Hey, we just published a new thing on crossing international borders. It's a distraction in the inbox. It's a document they've got to figure out. Do I need to read this? Do I need to do something with it? What is it? You know, um, maybe it doesn't even apply to their, their practice. Maybe they, they don't leave the country ever. And so now you've just, you know, you've given them one more thing to deal with and process in their busy day. Whereas with a system like ours, um, 
if it doesn't apply to them, it's not in their priorities, they're not even going to see it. And so I kind of think that's, that's a much better approach and just sticking to the stuff that's important. What's relevant to me right now. Matt. Yes. We've got another question from Rich. Okay. Uh, hey, Matt. Um, how, how long does the self-assessment tool uh, normally take to complete? Uh, that really depends on the, on the body of content that you've got. So our one here with uh, six sections, we uh, scaled this one down. Uh, and I think you can get through each section probably in about 10 minutes. Um, so this would probably, you know, this would be uh, an hour, 90 minutes to, uh, to get through this, uh, this given one here. Colorado's probably you're looking at uh, closer to three hours, I'm guessing three or four hours to get through theirs. Um, they had a lot of content. This is the, this is the trade-off. This is the push and pull, right? Um, we're not lawyers. We look at things from an efficiency perspective and say, how, what's the drop-off rate? You know what I mean? So if I get a hundred lawyers to click the button and have a look at my, at my, my assessment here, um, there's going to be a drop-off rate as the friction and the burden and the, the work of getting through that, uh, is imposed on them. And some of them just aren't going to finish it because it's too much work and so we push back a lot and say hey you know what's the objective of you're not going to teach them everything all at once we want to just try and give them the stuff that's going to be the most important uh to them right now so um we think there's a place for short uh 10 minute surveys as well which just that's it it's a one time 10 minutes come in and out focus on a given topic and then away you go uh, and that could be done through this type of an approach where you have um, sections. In other words, you guys might say, okay, we're just gonna publish one section to start cybersecurity. And then down the road, we may publish others um, as we develop the content. And you just keep adding in adding in uh, sections to it as you go. And again, the beauty is that a lawyer can come in here and they can, they can begin or uh, take just the ones that they want. I might look at this list and say, you know what? wellness is the one I want to focus on. I'm not too worried about the others. So I'm going to start with that one right there and, uh, and begin on that one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, thank you. That, um, we actually had uh, somebody from Colorado come talk to us about uh, their uh, assessment and it was very beefy. Yeah. And that's sort of where we started about three years ago, trying to maybe look at all the stuff Colorado was doing, but it was just too much to choke down to right. you know, try to get it all done at once. So we've narrowed it down to cybersecurity as our initial uh, sort of pilot project. And so, and we'll see how this goes. And then we'll look, looking down the road, we may or may not add future topics and subjects and and platforms for this but um yeah we looked at colorado's model very closely was that john white that you spoke with uh i think it was yeah he's the it was he the guy from the supreme court the or the it was john uh, white it was yeah, yeah, it was right. john white yeah, yeah 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 we worked very very closely with john he uh he was fantastic he was part of that project right from day one yeah. um and all the way through to the end and uh he's moved on and uh, enrolled but he's still he's still uh, championing that uh, that project there but yeah that was that was quite a mountain to climb for those folks out there they man they put a lot of a lot of time and energy and content in their stuff so they uh, sure did yeah, yeah there was a lot of stuff going on in there and then and that's one of the challenges that we see is uh in the profession is this desire to have everything perfect before publishing, right? right. And, and that's what lawyers need to do. You guys need to be, you know, really, really well put together before you put something out there. Um, uh, but we're a bit more experimental uh, as, as technologists. And we like to think, let's take some baby steps, low risk baby steps and get some things started and then learn from that, you know? So you yep. put out one section, you get some feedback from your first dozen users and all of a sudden you've got a way to make this thing better right off the bat. And, yeah. uh, and iteratively it just continue. Well, it's the same as what we're promoting to the lawyers, you know, it's a continuous improvement thing. And so uh, that's how we see this yep. platform. Yep. Evan, that, you've got yeah. a hand up. Yeah. Um, so, Hey, Dorothy, I, 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 yeah, my screen is shrunk down, but yeah, Dorothy, go ahead. It's okay. Um, so I'm still back on the anonymous reporting or the anonymous input. So if a per the information, the persons are inputting their information, they say they want to remain anonymous. Is there any voluntary 
information that is requested of them and how much of that information would we on this other end be able to receive like demographic information for instance because i'm trying to couple you know just kind of balancing the anonymity of the folks input in their information but also the need for us to want to have the information on the other end to be able to utilize it for what type of trainings and CLEs and things that we should provide and just to have some information on who actually is using the program or who's actually participating. Yeah, yeah, no, understood. Um, and so it's all how we present it at the front end, which is to say um, none of these questions are mandatory. Uh, None of this information, none of your answers uh, will be um, associated with you as an individual. Uh, the, the regulator won't even know that you did this. You know what I mean? So we, we basically, um, and I've got some, um, some visuals that we've used in other cases that try to show how that happens. But what we do is we basically split the answer base into two. And so one half of the answers is the answers that the lawyers access using their, uh, their login links. And that is the personally attributable side of it. And then we basically just strip a flattened version of that same answer data database, which is all just numbers, basically. It's like, here's the question. Here's the number that was assigned to it by some random user. And then we put that into a big um, uh, reporting database. And that all the reports that you guys will see will come from that flattened, anonymized uh, database. And so you will be able to see, you know, averages on any of those demographic questions um, that has uh, information. You'll be able to, just as you can see, and this is, I mean, this is incredibly valuable for um, uh, Colorado and other regulators who are using the platform. Just like a lawyer can see their priorities list as to what objectives they need to work on or what best practices they need to work on as well, as, well. Um, as a regulator in the anonymized uh, reporting that we can provide you, you can see that same view, but from an aggregate jurisdiction level. So out of all the lawyers, I mean, in Colorado, they've had thousands and thousands of lawyers. John can go in there and he can identify the number one objective that all of his lawyers have said, I need to work on this most. This is the lowest scoring thing in my entire practice. He can he can see that. He can find the lowest scoring uh, best practice uh, out of all the lawyers who have taken that thing. He doesn't care who answered what on there. But now he can take that information to his professional development folks and say, hey, I don't know if you guys know this, but did you know that, you know, in Colorado, lawyers think they need to be working on uh, cybercrime or they need to be working on international borders uh, with devices, whatever it might be. You don't get anything more evidence based than that to develop your programs and materials around, you know, than the direct feedback from your lawyers themselves. So we think... Um, one of the challenges you guys have is knowing what to work on. What do, the, what do our lawyers need, right? Uh, and this and this platform can provide you uh, that as well. The other thing we're going to be building into it, which I think will be useful, is um, some statistics on the uh, the resources uh, and and how they are accessed. So if you've got a library of resources, which ones are getting clicked on the most? Which ones are getting the most screen time and 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 viewed the most? Which ones get you know uh, clicked on and dropped with Within, uh, within 30 seconds because it didn't hit the mark. Um, again, also very useful information to know uh, in your resources what things you should be making more of, perhaps, what things you should be promoting, uh, and maybe what things just need to come off the list. If nobody's looking at it, why have it on the list anyway, right? So, um, so, so Matt, it's my understanding that you guys have got quite a library of resources that you can uh, sort of slide into our uh, uh, initial self-assessment here having to do with cybersecurity, uh, ones that your folks might curate and, um, and, 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 and sort of prioritize as perhaps the most important. Is that, am I right about that? You are. Yeah, you're correct. So uh, for each of the six sections that we have in, uh, in ours, um, I'm just going to stop my share there so that you guys can 
get the screen off. Yep. Um, in each of the, uh, uh, the six sections, we have assembled resources from the regulators that we've worked with and all of their resources are public and they don't, I mean, if they have a, a resource on cybersecurity on their website, they don't care who looks at that, you know. Um, we hired a lawyer to go out and uh, do uh, firsthand research, primary research into good resources around these topics. So um, they went out and, you know, pulled up 10 to 15 resources on each uh, best practice and, and objectives. So we have a bunch there. Um, and yeah, we're continuously adding to it. You know, as I'm kind of prowling around out there, if I see something interesting, I'll grab the link, drop it into our, uh, our library. So yeah, you've got access to that. We give you that to uh, at least seed your um, library to begin with. You can go through it and you'll probably eliminate a bunch of stuff right off the bat and say, yeah, those aren't going to work. And these won't work. Right. Um, and then you add your own stuff in on top of that. So you'll have a layered um, sort of approach of your own in-house resources and external stuff. Yeah, well, sort of the trajectory of this committee has been, like I said, at first was just to look at Colorado and try to swallow the whole cow. And then uh, after, after about a year and a half of that, um, I decided that we should focus just on cybersecurity. So we set up three work groups, really four work groups, uh, one to look at office management and two other subject matter uh, experts to look at uh, those two. And the fourth group to look at uh, how to uh, sort of, as I called it, the uh, makeup and lipstick group to kind of make it uh, palatable to the lawyers. But in the interim, we, uh, we set up a, an executive committee to, to really uh, shrink this down into what we thought were the most relevant questions and assessments. So uh, our, our great lipstick and makeup committee is the, are the ones that really got in touch with you and I'm so glad they did. We, um, we work some with uh, NC State University. They have a a graduate program out there for uh, for helping uh, folks like us. So we're glad that you uh, that that we found you, and this has been incredibly helpful and informative. Um, anybody else have any questions, Catherine? I think you talked with Matt before, right? With Leonore. I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you've, uh, Judge, Judge Hennett, you got anything you want to add? I know the description has been very helpful. Yeah, you got two judges on the line here, uh, Judge Dorothy, Mitch, Harrison Mitchell, and Judge Hennett, too. So, and nice. Alice is our executive director, who's been uh, quiet in the background here. And, and Patrick Brown is with um, Lawyers Mutual and one of our subject matter experts. So, uh, but this has been, uh, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and, um, and we'll be back in touch fairly soon, for sure. Sounds great. Well, if there's any questions, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out via email or okay. however you like. I'm happy right. to come back in and do this again with a focus on something, you know, uh, if that would help to uh, narrow down any of the areas uh, that you guys want to sort of dig into a, a little bit more. Um, I, yeah, I didn't pull a lot together here. It was a really quick, oh, it, uh, it, a quick it was, turnaround. It was beautiful. So. Yep. It was perfect. Yep. Great. Perfect. Well, I'm really glad All to right. hear that. All right, Matt, we'll try to take care of some business here. If we got a quorum, I'm not sure we do. So, um, but thank you very much. You're very welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day. Nice yes, meeting sir. you all. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thanks, Matt. Thank Bye. you, sir. Leonore, we don't have a quorum, do we? We do not, despite this being the indicated time. As you know, Evan, we had a few unexpected emergency yes. yeah. Um, yeah. folks who thought they would be able to attend and then life happened and now they weren't. I had my fingers crossed that Takiya Lewis would join in. Um, yeah. She said she could join late, but I, I'm, I'm not optimistic that that's a reality for her now. Yeah, or, or even Warren Savage, if uh, Patrick yeah. can go to dragging from walked, his office. I just walked around the whole office and did not see hide nor hair. So I'm not sure. Okay. You, you, you don't right. see much hair on Warren either. Not that I can talk, but. <laughs> well, uh, I think I'm we're. So Evan, of, Evan, Evan yes. could we do a straw poll to get a feel for the reaction of those of us that have watched it and perhaps any outstanding remarks that we want to make about 
our observations and I share that with agree. those that were not present and just let them go with the majority since we're kind of the majority. We just need one or two more people. Uh, that's a brilliant thank you suggestion, Patrice. <laughs> We're not uh, in trial, Evan. You don't need to tell me things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so but, let me yeah, just, I'm let, just trying to make it move, make it happen. A little, uh, let's do a little straw poll stuff here. Can we all agree that a live tech is no longer viable to even talk about with that $100,000 plus quote? Yes. Have we got consensus yes. on that? Yes. Um, and can we all agree that if we go forward, it's going to be with standpoint decisions? Yes. And yes. Okay, hang on, Rich. I'll be with you in one second. Uh, can we all agree that the uh, quote from standpoint decisions is reasonable and, um, and is something that we ought to, ought to pursue? Yes. All right. All right, yes. Rich, what you got to say? Yes. I, I was just giving the thumbs up sign to. to oh, control. okay. All right. Okay. I was very, so, very impressed with um, the, the presentation. All right. Well, if Rich agrees, we're in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> he controls a lot of Eastern North Carolina's, you know, opinion. He's an he's an influencer down there. I've so I have learned. <laughs> And uh, can we all agree if we, if we get a, a committee together that we ought to make a motion to the executive committee that we proceed with standpoint um, to, to create this platform given the work product that we've given them so far? I think so. Yep. Yes. So uh, Alice, uh, Alice we, has we, her wait hand. Wait a second. Up. Alice has got oh, a, I know Alice has got a procedural issue with it. Go ahead, Alice. Hey, hey, Evan. Um, so I thank you for letting me listen in on this. I apologize for not being more participatory, but I, as you can hear, I'm kind of under the weather. But uh, one thing I would like to do is to have, um, we have an, a new uh, group that we're working with for our managed services for the state bar that I have a lot of faith in. Uh, they did the original IT audit that we did about four years ago. Uh, and we went with another company at that time because we thought it was a conflict to go with that group. But then we came back to them um, because we have that much faith in them. What I'd like to do, if you all are okay with it, is just have them look at it and tell us, you know, is this a reasonable quote? Um, I, I looked at it and from my um, unknowledgeable perspective, it looked really reasonable to me given mm -hmm. what they were talking about in terms of deliverables. But I just think it would be wise for us to maybe have um, a somewhat independent party take a look at it, if, if you all are agreeable to that. I think that's, uh, that's, that's best business practices, isn't it, Alice, to have somebody else look at it? Well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, I, 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 I think uh, that I was seduced a little bit by the how how much uh, a reduction in price this was going to be from the uh, Alive Tech. So um, now Mac, Mac and I started talking way back in August about, you know, trying to get uh, folks to uh, fund this and, and sponsor this. And so did everybody get a copy of the, uh, the, the sort of sp the proposed sponsorship uh, document? Um, that's great. But I think let's hold off until Alice gets the green light from her IT people before we move to that matter. And, um, and if anybody wants to volunteer to work with Matt, he said he would prefer to have volunteers than have somebody that was, uh, that was uh, asked to be working on that. You know, a very small group of people, one or two people to work with Matt to you know, if this is approved by the executive committee. And, and I guess, Alice, it'd have to be uh, approved by the council as well. So Alice, you got your hand up. Yeah, so um, I would suggest, I mean, I, I think it's wonderful that we try to get contributions um, to pay for this. And I think there, we have a high likelihood that we're gonna get those because this, 
stuff goes directly to reducing the risk um, for law firms and there for their for their insured insurance companies, um, which are the ones that are primarily listed. I'm thinking on this on your document. I haven't seen that yet, but. Um, my suggestion is not to hold off on that, Evan. I mean, I, I think we want to do this project. It's just a question of, you know, exactly where we're going to, who we're going to do it with. And I think to go ahead and start those conversations is a good idea. I will uh, move as promptly as possible on getting the review. Um, but I, you know, my intent is to get it reviewed. And unless there's lots of, they have lots and lots of comments to just send you an, a message, you know, it's a thumbs up or you need to delay, but I wouldn't delay on asking the the, the yeah. people, especially lawyers mutual, go ahead and do that. And and you can just tell them that you're basing it on this, the current proposal, which hasn't been finally approved, but um, if, if that will be really helpful. We do not have any money in this year's budget for this. And we don't have any, um, I'm going to call it lanyap, which is, you know, the New Orleans way of saying kind of extra leftovers. Uh, we don't have any in the IT budget for this. We're, we're right at budget for 2022. So I'm thinking this needs to be a part of the 2023 budget, in which case the, the answer to your question, Evan, would be, you know, approval to go forward. And then most importantly, you would be seeking approval from executive committee for a budgeted item, and then ultimately for the from the council for the entire budget. But I think we want to make it part of the 2023 budget proposal, which I'll be working on in December. Um, the officers will review mid December, and then it would go to the council in January. So what you may want to do at this juncture is just preview that. And make sure the council, I'm mean, sorry, the council, the exec, make sure the executive committee doesn't have any objections to that as the, the path forward. So let me see if I heard you correctly, Alice. You're, you're saying that it may be a good idea to go ahead and approach Lawyers Mutual now about this. Um, yeah, I think so. Kind of, I, kind wouldn't, I wouldn't hold off. If, if, the, if you all are in agreement that this is the direction you want to go in. I don't think a review by our our group um, should slow you down at this juncture. I mean, if they say no, this is a terrible proposal. Well, then we'd go back to Lawyers Mutual and say, you know, we're we're going to postpone the request. Not that we're withdrawing it, because I think we're going to ask them for funding, regardless of where we you know we go to ultimately host this platform. Right? Okay, I got you, Patrick. You got your hand up. Yeah. Um, so uh, sorry, I had to jump off my computer. I was doing weird things, so I'm on my phone. Uh, but it, it, so Warren's already started this process a little bit internally. Um, he's uh, sent around some information, uh, more of a heads up to our uh, to Julie Beavers, who's head of client services, and um, uh, she has the sponsorship dollars uh, uh, under her budget. Um, and so she's already started talking with our CEO, Dan, um, about things. But yes, uh, if you guys want to reach out directly or through Warren and myself, that would be fine. And if we're looking at this for 2023, I think that would be ideal from our perspective also. Um, uh, I know that we're starting to work on our 2023 budget now. That's usually approved in December, but we're supposed to have it finalized within the next few weeks. Um, so it, it, timing is good for that. Okay. All right. Well, um, we'll, uh, we'll listen for a little bit of whispering back either from you or Warren or both of you about how uh, upper management feels about sponsoring this. So um, unless you think uh, Mac, McCarley and I ought to talk directly to somebody that's got the sponsorship funds. What, uh, what do you think, Patrick? Um, I think uh, unless there's more to add beyond uh, kind of the information that's been circulated around, uh, probably we can see what the temperature is like and how people feel about budgets and then schedule something. But if you want to yeah. go ahead and 
you know, make a bigger case now or find I, we can get that set up too. And so I kind of leave it in your hands, which way you want to proceed. Um, we'll, we'll push on our side and um, can let you know, or okay. if you want to put together a pitch, that's fine too. But okay. I, I, I guess we'll, we'll just wait to hear back from you guys a little bit. Okay. okay. And, uh, so next steps, I think, is going to be to try to um, get enough of the a quorum together so that we can make a motion to go forward in um, 2023. Catherine? I have a question. I, I don't, and Alice, somebody will tell me if this is in the violation of rules, but can we provide a summary to all the members and then ask them to vote? via email or electronically in some format versus trying to redo an in-person meeting? Is that an option yeah. for the rules? Yeah. That's sort you of talking, you're, you're talking about your committee, Catherine, you're talking about yeah. your committee. Yeah. Yes. Um, unfortunately, you know, well, it's an interesting question because we, we haven't ever quite we completely resolved how the public meeting rules apply to the, all the subcommittees that we have. So we tend to just default to saying, okay, they apply. And, and even though you guys don't have final authority, we just say they apply and then that way we're never wrong. Um, so no, you can't just do a cyber vote, unfortunately. Okay. Um, we'd have to have some kind of, of you know, even a brief meeting. Uh, with you know the proper public notice and all of that stuff, if I I can check in with Catherine and Jean, Catherine, um, and see if she has a different perspective on that. Uh, but as I said, you know, erring on the side of caution has a lot of benefit. Well, so, maybe maybe you know we can shoehorn a meeting in in October uh, for fifteen minutes somewhere. I, I'm a, I know the agenda is already set. And Leonora, I hate to add more wood to your wood pile, but can you get a summary of what our consensus was and get it out to the committee at some point? You just be real short about it, but. I can, um, I can. And I can okay. also poll the committee to see if there is any, well, I guess we've gotta be mindful in terms of the meeting week not crossing over with right. anything that is going on there. I don't know if there's a quick 10 to 15 minute window that the folks could get together this week um, to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll take a poll for those of you who are on here if you think that that would be a possibility. It, it sounds like it would be pretty quick. Um, well, maybe uh, maybe uh, on the night of one of the dinners, we could meet 15 minutes early at the bar and have a drink and uh, and, and take a hands up. I have an, I, I have yes, an alternative did. proposal. Yes, ma'am. And that would be if you all voted now, um, you know, to you know, on the assumption that there's not going to be any recommended changes or further, you know, investigation. Uh, as a result of me sort of slowing things down and saying, which let us have these, our IT people review it. But just if, if everybody is otherwise in agreement to proceed, then you vote in principle to proceed subject to, you know, any uh, decision by the chair that things should be diverted for further discussion, something like that, um, it, rather than to try to scheduled to re-meet or wedge it in during the, the October meeting. That's a great idea, Alice. Is there a motion on what Alice just said? So moved. Second. Rich second. second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Raise the aye. hand. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Aye. Anybody opposed? So, okay, well, the uh, non-quorum motion passes what, <laughs> with whatever weight that carries. All right, um, anything else? Thank you all. We've kind of run over nine minutes. I really appreciate everybody making some time. This was very informative. And to me, it, 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 it clicks all the boxes that we want and, and, and more at a reasonable price. Um, any final thoughts, Catherine, from you since you've been uh, 
you've been this point of the spear on this thing with the uh, nope. Nope. All righty. Well, uh, okay. You, thank. Would you and Leonor stay on after the Zoom just to make sure we're all on the same page procedurally? Okay. All right. Thank you all. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I feel much better about it after hearing the presentation today. It just it just sounded right and it, and it looks right and the price is right. And, it, and he's experienced, know, he, so it's not like we have to try to hold his hand and walk him through the process to get what we want. And Patrice, his library of, of uh, cyber links is enormous. And they have people there that will curate that and put it in the right place. And, you know, and also kind of dress up our questions a little bit that, you know, we put a lot of time and energy into putting those questions together. But, uh, you know, they'll, they may do some editing and curating because they've got some experience on this. So we're, this, is, this is what I was looking for uh, from the beginning, to be able to take what we have and turn it over to somebody and then they can do a turnkey operation and a nice one. So I think that is going to work. Okay. okay. See y'all in a week and a half. Bye.